Memphis, Tennessee, where today the Tigers welcome their neighbors from 70 miles down south, the Rebels of Ole Miss. It is the most anticipated game in Memphis history. Memphis has won 12 in a row. The Tigers haven't lost a game in more than a calendar year. And now they have a chance for national notice against their rivals. Welcome, everybody. Tom Hart alongside Heisman winner Andre Ware. These are the two of the top five scoring offenses in the country, so get ready for a lot of points and get ready for great quarterback Yeah, play. when you have scoring, you got good quarterbacks, and both these guys complete a high percentage of passes. 64% for Chad Kelly, 70% for Paxton Lynch, which is third in the country. I think we're going to watch both these guys play on Sundays at one point. Chad Kelly, a guy that can reach all the points on the field with his arm, an underrated runner as well. You see the passing yard, or yards per game. Paxton Lynch, 6'7", Tom, but a mobile quarterback that can move around. They can score points and score them in a hurry. It's not just a big game in Memphis. It's not just a game in the Mid-South. This is a game with postseason implications. Hugh Freeze is back home, and his Rebels have taken the field in Memphis. And a rivalry that dates to 1921. Ole Miss has dominated this series. They won the first 17 head-to-head. -head, and that first game was an 82 to nothing Rebel win. Memphis hasn't won since 04. But it's a homecoming for a lot of guys on both sidelines. And for more on that, let's go down to the field as we say good morning to Laura Rutledge. Tom, this one's personal for Hugh Freeze. He says they claim him here just as they do in Mississippi. And he coached high school for 13 years at Briarcrest just around the Corner. But what you may not know is he also interviewed for an assistant women's basketball job here in Memphis in 2004. Didn't get the job. He says he's okay with the way things have worked out. A lot of ticket requests for Freeze. He passed them all over to his wife. They've given away about 50 tickets. They had to buy eight to have enough. He said some of his friends are torn. He saw one earlier wearing a Memphis shirt. But he still had his Ole Miss cell phone case in his pocket. Well, thanks. Yeah, that cell phone, at least you Freeze, will be blowing up with a win here today. Smart man passing off the ticket request. Get out of the ticket business on game day. Jake Elliott puts it in the air. Jalen Walton will watch it sail over his head on a windy day here in Memphis. Ole Miss has a first-year starting quarterback, Chad Kelly. He's the nephew of Pro Football Hall of Famer Jim Kelly. He has made an instant impact on this Ole Miss offense. Yeah, and he's a guy that can make all the throws. Excellent arm strength. He's great strength. He's a workaholic. Comes in before practice, during lunchtime, after practice. Spends a lot of time in the film room and really picked up this Ole Miss offense quite quickly, and it's tough to do. A lot of wrinkles in Hugh Freeze's offense. Kelly spent two years at Clemson, one year at junior college, won a junior college national championship. He's got Jalen Walton back in the full behind him at tailback. And the first play from scrimmage, play action. He finds Laquan Treadwell, one of the best wide receivers in the country. And Treadwell is able to take it for a gain of seven. Yeah, we had a chance to talk to Dan Werner last night. And Treadwell's the type of receiver you want to get him involved early in a ball game just to get his footing, get him going. You got to keep those receivers happy. Kelly will swing it out behind the line of scrimmage. Treadwell has a man. Complete to Quincy Adebojo. A little trickery. Second play from scrimmage. And Ole Miss goes 68 yards for the score. Last week on a similar play, New, Mex New Mexico State was able to tip a ball on a quick bubble screen for a Chad Kelly interception. Memphis, I'm sure, watching the film, got aggressive, came up out of coverage on Treadwell, and that left Attaboy Joe wide open down the sideline. So the first touchdown pass of the game is not thrown by Chad Kelly or Paxton Lynch. It goes receiver to receiver. Laquan Treadwell. Watch it here. He's going to swing it out wide to Treadwell. You see the aggression of all the defensive backs. They leave coverage. They leave out of Boyd Joe wide open, and then it's a foot race. He is a big play waiting to happen. How about that? Oh, two talented young players. And Ole Miss, generally, when they get off to a good start, boy, they can inflict their will on you as the game progresses. Their only loss of the season came on the road at the Swamp on October 3rd. They're shut out 
in the first quarter. They had a hard time getting anything going against the Gators. Bounced back with a big win against New Mexico State last week for Hugh Freeze. Jalen Oglesby back to receive for Memphis with Roderick Proctor. Nathan Noble will handle the kickoff duties. Short kick into the wind. Handled on the run. Oglesby gets through one man and gets brought down by two more. Good return. Takes it out to the 27-yard line. So it's up to Paxton Lynch, the junior from Florida, to answer. And he goes play action first play, finds Allen Cross, who flips his way for a Memphis first down, a gain of 10. C.J. Hampton with the stop. Yeah, Paxton Lynch is... Some talent, 62% career passer. He's 70 on the year this year. That's third best in the entire country. Ten touchdowns has yet to turn the football over via inter interception. He is making his 31st consecutive start for this red hot Memphis program today. Lynch goes to the outside, but dropped by Phil Mayhew, a little bit low. He's got to worry about this Ole Miss defense, which is loaded with future pros as we take a look at our impact players, starting with Robert Kondiche. Yeah, he's a big guy, outstanding player that can play inside a tackle or outside a defensive end. Big, strong, physical. He's hard to move. Lynch to throw now. Pocket collapses. And on the run, pumps and gets drilled. Couldn't pull the trigger. Mike Hilton comes in for the tackle. That's a loss of three. Yeah, Hilton's a versatile player that's played everywhere in the secondary. And he's played that nickel or slash husky position. Says he likes being around the line of scrimmage. Got a chance to visit with him last week. You see him here. Excellent open field tackler. When he commits, he usually makes a nice tackle when he decides to commit to it. So third and 17 for Paxton Lynch. They'll roll the pocket this time. He can run a little bit, and he fires on the run complete to the 38-yard line. Jalen Oglesby with the grab, well short of the sticks. And a kicking situation for Memphis, a squad that uses two different punters, Nick Jacobs and Spencer Smith. Penalties and turnovers in big games usually spell the difference. A big penalty. The lineman down the field really killed this drive for Memphis. Jacobs trying to kill this one at the 10. A great punt handled there on a fair catch. And that's where Chad Kelly will take over. Already a passing touchdown for Ole Miss today on the first possession. It was Kelly to Treadwell to Adeboyjo. Second possession for the Ole Miss offense after scoring on their second play of the game. A two-play 75-yard scoring drive that lasted just 20 seconds. Chad Kelly has thrown for over 300 yards in four of his six starts this season. Back to the bubble screen. This is Cody Corn. He wrestles his way for a first down. Let's check in with Laura. Tom, Justin Fuente told us he felt like his team hasn't played smart football out of the gate yet this year. He's seeing more of that today. Going down the sideline saying, you guys have to calm down. You're too hyped up. Just settle down and play football. We know what we're doing. Kelly to throw on second and long. Complete, short of the sticks. A turn and extra effort for Laquan Treadwell, and he is right at the number. They look at impact players for Ole Miss, and they've got a freshman on the offensive line. Yeah, he was directly responsible for two blocks, two touchdown runs last week. Javon Patterson, true freshman, five-star recruit that has just really earned the respect of his teammates and his coaching staff. Play action, Kelly going deep. What a grab! Leaving his feet is Cody Core, and he hauls it in for a 27-yard gain. Well, he is one of the probably the most underrated receiver in the conference. A guy that averages over 20 yards per catch. He's just a big play waiting to happen. Climbs the ladder, gets tall, and a nice grab to finish the play. Kelly goes to the slant. Here's Core again, and he was the shoelace away from breaking that one. This is a beleaguered Memphis secondary. They've given up 307 yards a game through the air. This is a guy, look at this, just one hand, bring it in and then secure it before you get to the ground. Had a big game against Alabama. Four catches for 123 yards. Jalen Walton trying to change direction. He's able to pick up just two. Jannard Avery there, along with a host.
comes to Buddies in on the stop on the Memphis product, Walton. Yeah, when you have a type of talent with, like Treadwell, you've got to have somebody on the other side to really step up. And Cody Corb kind of provides Ole Miss that security blanket where they've got to go away from Treadwell where he's seeing, you know, co a corner and a safety over the top, double coverage. Cody Corb singled up on the other side, and boy, does he, he respond. And the results have been big plays to Corb, second in the SEC in yards per catch. Ingram motions out of the backfield. Kelly looks left, finds Core again. Well, they see something that they like with Cody Core, and that time on Dontrell Nelson. Boy, it's all the attention, as I mentioned, to Treadwell. You're going to make sure you're taking care there, taking care of on that side. And Core is left in man to man in a lot of situations because of that talented youngster. Already four catches, 57 yards. He gets a break. Demoria Stringfellow replaces him. Pump and go that way to the end zone. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Demoria Stringfellow, 23 yards. They are just plentiful in terms of receivers. Stringfellow, a transfer from Washington, set, got set out because of transfer rules a year ago. But he's right in line with the other receivers in terms of big bodied guys, 6'2, 220 pounds, and can flat out run. Eight plays, 90 yards, 233 off the clock, two possessions, two touchdowns for the Ole Miss Rebels. Kelly with his 15th touchdown pass of the season, and the Rebels have a two touchdown lead. From the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee, Ole Miss and Memphis. Tom Hart alongside Andre Ware and Laura Rutledge. Cool, crisp fall afternoon here in the Mid South. In a windy one, too. That might play a role in it later. But as of now, Memphis needs to find some offense. Short kick will trickle out of bounds, and Memphis will have better field position. Cross in motion, play action. They try to dump off, and it falls incomplete. Lucky that one wasn't picked. Tanning Ward, the senior from Aberdeen, Mississippi, brought the pressure. What a nice game last week against New Mexico State. He's played a lot of football at Ole Miss. Solid depth player. Watch him come off the edge. Reads it just perfectly. Just at the last second, able to get that left hand up and a hand on the football. They come at you in waves, don't they? Yeah, no doubt. They are deep inside on, along the defensive line. First carry for Jarvis Cooper. Cooper picks up six. Tony Bridges cuts him down. That'll bring up third and nine. Been waiting to see big Jarvis Cooper, a guy that they kind of compare to the bus. Big guy at 6'1", 245. He's got sweet feet. Can run downhill and make defenders miss. And they love him in the short yardage situations. He was a nose guard in high school over at West Memphis across the river. Tigers 0 for 2 on third downs thus far today. Lynch goes for the screen. Cooper's got it. And he's got the first down and lowers his shoulder for another couple. Yeah, but there is Webster with the tackle. Yeah, got another flag down, I think, along the sideline. Yeah, right in front of the Memphis bench at the feet of one of their assistant coaches. After the play, personal foul, number 27 of the defense. 15-yard penalty added on to the end of the run. First down. Well, finally, some good news on the other end of a flag for this Memphis team. Watch right out of bounds. Cooper's out of bounds. Late hit. Marquise right, Haynes. Yeah, by Haynes. Up. Haynes coming in a little bit late. That's the eighth penalty of the first quarter. This is officiating crew earning its per diem today. Cooper, full head of steam. Room on the sideline. Oh, he got trucked. Tried to cut it back, and he got dropped by Carlos Davis. Wow. Davis is only 5'8", 171. Cooper, 6'1", nearly 250. I'm going to say the big fella lost his footing a little bit. You see him trying to slow down. He didn't really size him up, but that's, a, that's still a great tackle in the open field. You just, you quarterbacks just can't appreciate great defensive play, can you? 
<laughs> I love a good defensive play. That one, I think the big fella's trying to cut it back, though. Second and two. Stutter steps behind the line, and he just got the first down. Cooper dropped by Christian Russell at the end of that one. Fresh set of down should be for Memphis. And he is a big guy that has some nice movement to his frame. Went to 245 pounds, can change directions. Once they insert him into the game, I'm watching the film of this Cincinnati game, and he really got them going. Once he got in, average is just under five yards a carry. Really gave him a punch to the offense. A sprint right, Lynch on the run, finds his receiver. It's a gain of seven for Memphis, and Tevin Jones with another grab. Tony Bridges in the coverage, and now that Memphis offense finding some rhythm. Yeah, it will give Memphis a tremendous amount of confidence if they're able to score here. Took a couple of punches early, with a nice defensive stops, and now they're on the move. Back to the run game, and Jarvis Cooper. Pick up a five and a first down. Yeah, this is the old sprint draw, where you take Pat Braxton Lynch, sprint him left, and bring the back underneath. Cooper comes underneath, quarterback sprinting left. You kick out with the guard pulling. It's a nice job and well-executed play. Memphis has been fantastic in the red zone this season. Seventh best in the country. Eighth play of the drive. Lynch will take it himself. Paxton Lynch has put on about 15 pounds, and the coaches tell us he's become a better runner as his body has gotten bigger. He's got more strength to pick him up and put him down, and more momentum. He's bigger, he got stronger. When you get stronger, you're going to be faster. And when you look at him, he's not a lumbering 6'7", 245-pound quarterback. He plays. We were talking about this yesterday. To me, you watch the film, he plays like he's 6'3". That's a compliment because he moves like a smaller player. And he usually, when you get a 6'7 guy, he doesn't move like Paxson Lynch. And second and four, Cooper bounces, bends it back, and he is in. Touchdown, Memphis. Nice job here of getting vertical at the right time. And it's just going to be Kent. Did he stay up long enough? I think so. The ball just barely breaks the plane. It's a nice job of running by Jarvis Cooper. Set it up well. Jake Elliott has made 111 consecutive point afters. And he keeps his streak going. Longest in the country. Memphis finally on the board. Had to go to the DVR twice. They may have scored twice. Paxton Lynch with another touchdown pass. He's got 11 on the year. They needed an answer, and they got it. Nice job in defense and a couple of possessions, forcing the punt and overcoming a roughing the punter penalty to still stop Ole Miss and get the ball back, go down and score. No chance for a return for Jalen Walton. Let's go down on the field and check in with Laura. Well, Ole Miss offensive coordinator Dan Werner said it like this. When Laramie Tunsil comes back, we are much better. Tunsil, of course, returning next week. And Hugh Freeze saying that when he spoke with Tunsil this week, he told his coach, I want to finish what I started. He had heard a lot of outside noise about not playing the rest of the season because of the injury to Nick Chubb and just going to the NFL. But Tunsil said, I'm not going to do that. I don't want this to be the end of my story. And Freeze, of course, told him, hey, if you want to help your draft stock, go and block Miles Garrett next week. <laughs> yeah, against Texas a &M. Tunsil, the All-American left tackle, has 20 starts to his name. They've made do as Treadwell makes this catch and slides to a stop by moving Fawn Cooper from right tackle to left tackle. And then they were bothered by some injuries on the interior of the line. Yeah, Tunsil has aspirations of being the number one overall pick. You sit out, I guarantee you that's not happening. What a play. Kelly off play action again. And he's able to fire another one for a first down. Just about every play that Ole Miss runs has another play tagged to it. 90% of their runs have a pass tag to it on a run pass option. Kelly pulls it back, keeps it himself. Finally slides a little bit late. Picks up five. Whitten McManus in on the stop for Memphis. They get you thinking inside run, and they've gone to Wilkins on a couple of occasions, and he pulls it this time. Memphis not realizing just the athletic ability that Chad Kelly possesses. 
These two programs separated by just 70 miles. This rivalry bigger than the Mid-South today and a full house at the Liberty Bowl. This presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Kelly looking deep over the middle, caught. Stringfellow, the gain of 18. That'll bring up third and about seven. Regis Ball, the senior from Stone Mountain, Georgia, with the stop. You just can't allow that much time. That, that gives receivers the opportunity to get deep in routes. Now it's very manageable in terms of this third down for Ole Miss. Back to the air again for Kelly. Whoa, the hands for the grab. Wow. Treadwell with a first down catch. We're in perfect position is Dion Witte, who comes from inside. Watch this grab by Treadwell. I mean, that's just that's just working right there. You love receivers with range. Woo! Kelly has it, keeps it right side, takes a hit and takes it down nearly to the 11, a gain of eight. But Juan Treadwell showing that he's one of the best in the country. Yeah, I had this conversation with you, Freeze, and he says we, they, we go out and we recruit big receivers like Treadwell, 6'2 and larger. Because of that reason, there's a lot of there's a big throwing range around him. As opposed to having to hit smaller guys in the body, you throw it around a guy like Treadwell who catches it with his hands. They've got Jeremy Liggins in at right guard now. Formerly a tight end. He's leading the way. And they didn't get it. Trying to clear it for Jordan Wilkins. Liggins has played quarterback. He's played tight end. And he moved to the offensive line last week against New Mexico State. Third and one. Here they bring in Ryan Buchanan. And that's usually a sign that some type of quarterback run in. It's like Kandichi's in the ball game as well. The big fella. Right there, they, they've handed it to him in short yardage situations. Three touchdowns this year for Kandichi. Buchanan, a quarterback, hands it off straight ahead. Kandichi didn't get it. Stopped by Memphis. Jannard Avery, the first man there. Uh oh. Kandichi is down. Okay, you get six of nine on fourth down this season. You get to this situation past the 50. This dealer's choice. It's all four down when you play a team like a go miss. Kelly tosses it. Nothing to him. Memphis comes up with the stop. Jackson Dillon, the junior from Ringling, Oklahoma. It's a loss of six. He's the team's top returning tackler from a year ago. And they'll drop him down to play defensive end at times. And he did there to get a four-man front. Watch the stop. He gets tremendous penetration. Memphis going to turn away Ole Miss and have some decent field position. To go the best defensive player for Ole Miss, Robert Kimdichie, in on a third and short run, got injured, and he's been helped back to the Ole Miss locker room. <laughs> Memphis back on offense. Jarvis Cooper is a tailback. It's Woodrow Hamilton and Breland speaks on the interior now for Ole Miss. Mitch hands it off to Cooper and he fights his way for a gain of three. And I don't care who you are or how many players you got, you lose a guy like Robert Kandichi, it's going to have an impact on your defense. Well, it, it, uh, it affects you depth wise as well when they decide to rest him. Now, all of a sudden, his replacement's going to have to take all the snaps. Look at this formation. Ole Miss blows it up. They had four receivers split to the far side. Terry Caldwell blew right through all of them. It's a loss of five as they try to get it to Jalen Oglesby. I think they've seen that play a few times in practice. Try to quick snap it, get it out there. And Caldwell, nice play from inside. Had a nice game substituting or sitting in for C.J. Johnson. Empty backfield for Paxton Lynch. Pocket collapses again. Sets, fires, complete. This is Miller. He's got the sideline. Anthony Miller takes it 35 yards for a Memphis first down. That's why I said he was a deep threat right there. The speed. He runs a nice crossing route. 
Lynch is going to buy himself some time. They get tremendous push up front, but watch him by the time. This is what I'm talking about. He doesn't play like a guy that's 6'7". He's much smaller, and then now it's just a run after the catch by Miller, who turns it into a first down. That's excellent work by Memphis offensively. Lynch stops, fires, finds his tight end cross, and he's got a first down. Well, you see the mobility of a guy like Paxton Lynch able to sprint out, set his feet, athletic enough to still square his shoulders and throw back inside to his tight end cross. Well, this takes some guts. It's not a move that you would normally coach up. I'll tell you what, he's got the freedom in this offense to pretty much do what he wants. We trust him. And he'll take off on the draw straight ahead and get stopped. At the game of the yard and a half, Terry Calder will be stopping. We may be seeing more of uh, Paxton Lynch rolling out today because of the pressure that Ole Miss can bring. Yeah. Their coaches knew they had to do something to take that aggression and use it against the run. Well, you get him inside, you can sure up some things moving him and with his, his accuracy on the move, certainly an asset for this Memphis offense. But we need to pick up this. Uh, Move the chains here once again on second down. Dorlin Dorsey is now in a tailback for Memphis. He flares out. They go over the middle. Nice move. And to the outside, it's Proctor. And he's inside the 10 for a Memphis first down. C.J. Hampton with the stop. Game of 17. Such accuracy with the throw. That's what makes it work. Nice route, but the throw. Right out in front of the receiver, Proctor, where he can catch it on the run. It's just a nice molding of the football. It's out in front where you don't have to wait on it. And now it can turn the shoulders and get up the field. Play action, end zone. Batted away. Trying to fit it into cross. Trey Elston was right there. Got to take care of the football down here. You don't want to be too cautious. But you need the points here, and then getting the ball back right out of the locker room, you could really establish control of this football game. A lot of contact. On the inside, you see the play fake, a nice delivery, and I don't know, that was, looks a little bit early to me. Second and goal. Dorsius. Got to turn his way, maybe picks up two. I think it's one of those with a quarterback run pass option attached to it. So maybe an underneath look. And you read it out. If it's there for Dorsius or Cooper, give it to him. If not, pull it. Put some pressure on the edge of the defense with Lynch, but with a receiver or two on the back end of it. Maybe coming here the open side of the field. He'll take off. Lynch saw sunlight, and then it was eclipsed by Fidel Brown, who trips him up a gain of one. Maybe a little bit too early. Well, it's there. The quarterback draw. I see it. I saw exactly what he was trying to get to. The front is there. One linebacker in the middle. They do a, a twist charge, and it allowed Brown but all Brown to come free. If he rushes straight up the field, Lynch may walk into the end zone. But with the gain by the defensive line, he basically gained his way right into the tackle. Chip shot for J.K. He punches it through. Memphis able to put a score on the board after six play, 35 yard scoring drive. Run into trouble since. Jalen Walton back to receive this kick. No return for Ole Miss. 12. It's been over a calendar year. Of course, Ohio State has won 19 in a row, dating back to their loss to Frank Beamer and Virginia Tech last season. Kelly goes down the hash mark. Tipped. Picked off. Memphis with the interception. Deion Witte played the carom, and the Tigers will get another chance this half. All right, a tip drill, and both quarterbacks have thrown 
The two interceptions by both quarterbacks have been on tips by receivers where you thought it would be in their hands. Kelly times this just right. Accurately thrown ball. Should be a catch. Maybe a little bit behind Markel Pack, but still should have been a catch. And then on the back end of this, this where as a quarterback, you got to keep your head on a swivel. But Terrence Brady laid that lick on Kelly. Well, Memphis couldn't punch it in. They had first and goal on their last possession, had to settle for a field goal. Jet sweep action. Lynch keeps it. Fires. Caught. Inside the five to Dor Dorcius, and Ole Miss is saying incomplete. Well, Dorcius. Well, the officials are saying a completion. A gain of 13. A nice pass there right out of the break as he cleared a linebacker. Lynch put it right in the bread basket. That's the quickness in which he throws it right here. That's a catch. Get the snap off. Here's Sam Pack. Touchdown, Tigers, their first lead. is what they like to do with Kraft. It mentioned earlier, they'll line him up in the slot with Cooper in the game a lot and run the speed sweep to him. He's a nice edge runner, has good size at six foot 210. And Memphis right back in this game. Remember all the mistakes, the miscues early by Memphis kept hanging around, getting themselves off the field on third downs, and now find themselves about to go up here 17-14. Elliott's extra point is good. Fifth rushing touchdown of the season for Sam Kraft. You see the end around. They give it to Kraft. A nice job of sealing things up. Dorcius with a nice block himself to help Kraft get into the end zone. There's your offensive coordinator. That's uh, Daryl Dickey, co-offensive coordinator. Is it? Dad watching the game for Pearland, Texas today. Good football coach. This game today is different for Memphis, though. They have the momentum. A win here vaults them into the rankings, puts them in play for a New Year's Day Bowl, and so much more. Very well, five catches today. Kelly looking for him. Number one has it slipped through his fingertips. Regis Ball with the coverage. When Galen Scott decided to start bringing a little pressure on Kelly, now he's got him off his landmark. He's just not quite as accurate as he was when he first started this football game. And it looks a little bit, it's a little bit shaky here in the second quarter. This one complete to the edge. There you go. Get you a nice, easy completion to get his footing and, and bring his, get his confidence back a little bit. Treadwell so so good. Quick a hitch that he takes almost for a first down. Third and one. Straight ahead, and we'll see where the mark is. That spot may be short. It was Akeem Judd with his first carry as they go to some bulk in the backfield. Well, they are showing a tremendous amount of respect to Laquan Treadwell. Third down and one. And the corner is about eight yards deep. You can just raise up and give it to him. Watch the top gonna, of the screen. They're going to go for it on fourth and short. Chad Kelly never leaves the field. A turnover here gives Memphis great field position. They didn't Kelly get it. stood up behind the line. Pagese, the first man there. Chad Kelly was screaming at the sideline to go for it on fourth down. No, there's no way he got a, a free rusher off the edge. They got right into his chest and turned him. And Memphis going to ride all types of momentum right now. Right off the edge, you see 53. You get right to him. Well, this is an excellent job. Nobody catches him. He doesn't. He's just free to the quarterback. Nice tackle, and he turns him back the other way rather than allowing him to turn his legs and go forward and Memphis this is when you take the shot to the end zone right here with Paxton Lynch 
You get a one-on-one -on -one matchup you like, you strike right now. Third straight possession to start in Ole Miss territory. Here's one on the outside. Safety is gone. Lynch keeps it straight ahead. Reaches forward to pick up the second yard. D.J. Jones with the stop. Remember, this Ole Miss defensive line playing without Robert Kimdichie. He left earlier this half with a head injury. Well, I just think you have to be aggressive in this situation. So up 17-14, excellent field position. You get the coverage you want. You've got a, a quarterback that can spray it around the park. Pump and go. Lynch pressured. Will roll. And he fires. And that one's almost intercepted. It went right through the hands of Kendarius Webster. Well, there's just a nervous energy in this entire yeah. stadium. I mean, this one you want to you want to throw it. It's got to get over Webster's hands, and he is a a big guy, 5'11", almost six foot, corner on the outside, and it's tremendous range. Almost picked that one off, and he looked like he was just trying to throw it away. Third down, 13. Cross in motion. Long throw, caught. This is Miller. He's stretching for the chains. Miller may have the first down, Tom. He is close. I think with that spot, he's going to have it. Boy, has he come up with some big plays after a false start penalty. He has just turned or flipped the switch offensively and has come up with some nice plays to help this Memphis offense, and it's first and ten. 14-yard reception for Miller. He's got 68 yards of receiving on the day. Fresh set of downs. Memphis has three timeouts. Miller in the backfield now. Lynch looking. Fires. Got it. To the six-yard line. Mose Frazier, gain of 17. Yeah, they basically motion everybody in, and Mose Frazier's the only receiver in the route. You see it here. They motion everybody in close. He's running a comeback along the sideline. It's just him against the defensive back, Tony Bridges. And he outflanks him, gets open for Lynch, and a nice delivery of the football coming back down the stem. Gordon Dorsius is the tailback. Lynch fires. It is caught. Touchdown, Memphis. Anthony Miller again. A six-yard strike. Well, this is thrown perfectly low and in front. Right down there where the defensive back can't make a play on it. He rolls over. The Tigers open up a 10-point advantage. You couldn't have guessed this after the first two possessions for Ole Miss. It's a first regular season non-conference game they've trailed since September of 2013 against Texas. And the Tigers, as you mentioned, will receive the second half kickoff. They're fired up. The Memphis faithful are fired up. The only calm guy in the stadium looks to be Justin Fuente. What a turnaround and a sensational second quarter for the Tigers. Justin Fuente is standing by with Laura Rutledge. Thanks, Tom. Coach, you just huddled with your team there. What did you say to them? Well, obviously, we're riding an emotional high right now, and we've got to stay in the moment and stay focused on the task at hand, play the next play. There's a whole other half a ball to be played, and we're playing a very good, explosive, physical, tough team. So I'm happy that we're excited, but also we need to understand there's a whole other half to play. Any adjustments you need to see defensively? Defensively against what you could expect from Ole Miss offensively? Well, it'll be interesting to see if we can continue to get a little bit of pressure and cover down in the back end. We're playing pretty well against the run. Um, but, you know, they've got some pretty skilled guys, obviously, on the outside. So, you know, we may be able to mix a few things up. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Thank you. I told you, he's the only calm one in the building. <laughs> At the half, Memphis leads Ole Miss 24-14. When we return, the studio will catch up on everything at halftime after these messages. Welcome back to the American Conference on ESPN. 
And an upset rolling at the Liberty Bowl as the Tigers of Memphis with a late second quarter rally have opened up a 10 point advantage on Ole Miss. 12 game win streak on the line for the Memphis Tigers. And a series with Ole Miss that dates back to 1921. Nathan Noble will kick it off. Jalen Oglesby to receive for the Tigers. They've scored on three consecutive possessions. And he'll bring it out. Oglesby gets stuck at the 18-yard line. Let's take a look at our halftime double check brought to you by State Farm. We didn't think this would be a big ground game, and it certainly hasn't been yet. But Memphis has taken advantage on red zone scoring. Three touchdowns and a field goal on four trips inside it. Yeah, and then you look at third downs as well. <clears throat> Converting on third downs has been where Memphis has really made their mark. Four of seven on third downs. They're 47% coming into this game on thir in third down situations. Ole Miss failing to capitalize just two of seven in those situations. So Paxton Lynch and the Memphis offense back at it. Fourth year junior from Deltona, Florida. He wants to throw. They try to set up the wide receiver screen. A little bit of room for Miller who jumps through. Let's go down the field and check in with Laura Rutledge. Tom, Robert Kimdichi is out for the rest of this game with a concussion. Hugh Freeze confirmed they will be without their best defender. He said we have to tackle better. He gave credit to Memphis, saying they're a very good squad. But he said our defense has not done their job. Boy, just injuries all season long. C.J. Johnson. You mentioned Tony Connor earlier. Isaac Gross has been out since week one. Interior lineman, excellent player inside. And now Kim Dietschy. So second and three to the bubble screen. This is Mayhew. He's got to pass the 30 in a Memphis first down, a gain of eight. You've got to be careful here if you're Ole Miss and not allow Memphis into the end zone. They can really break this game open. A lot of momentum at home. Riding a wave of moment of uh, emotion right now. We need a stop in the worst way. Lynch has a little room on the edge. What an arm, and he threw it through Anthony Miller's hands. Up there, he was going to take off, maybe pick up about four yards. A lot of green grass turf in front of Paxton Lynch. Oh, he is a, a good looking. Young player. 207 yards through the air. A couple of scores and one pick on a deflection. And a handoff to Sam Kraft. He picks up two. Third and eight. Forthcoming for Memphis. Kraft has found his way to the end zone in the first half of the speed sweep. Guy that they like to use a lot. A variety of ways. Line him up in running back, slot receiver. Bring him on those speed sweeps. Throw it, throw it to him in space just to get him going. Empty backfield here. They motion cross. Long throw to the perimeter, wow. complete for a first down. That is Anthony Miller again. He's having a career day. And he is converted now four third downs for Memphis. Well, watch the eyes of the quarterback. He goes all the way left, and he comes all the way back to the other side of the field here to Anthony Miller. But the eyes of Paxton Lynch went as far out left initially, scans the defense, and comes all the way back to the far side to Miller, and then the arm strength in which to get it there. Impressive. Five of his seven catches have come on third downs. Here he is again on first down. Anthony Miller breaks free for a moment. He's got another first down. That one picks up 11. Miller at a Christian Brothers school right here in Memphis. Turned down scholarship offers only from FCS teams to walk on here at Memphis. Both of his parents attended school here. Not where you start, it's where you finish. Red shirt, sophomore, and a walk on. He's over 100 yards receiving to the slant in the middle. And it's easy to see Paxton Lynch has found a reliable receiver and option to Miller. Miller, Mose, Frazier, Cross. All guys that have been or had balls completed to him. I've been very impressed with the poise of Paxton Lynch. You could tell when this game first started, the adrenaline was rushing a little bit. 
this settle in nicely. Big hit up front on Sam Kraft. Kraft able to pick up three. Demarcus Gates. First time we've seen that. And Laura gives us the injury report that Robert Kandici's not coming back. They line up and just come right downhill without Kandici inside. Memphis feels like they can take advantage of that. Just run between the tackles and have a little bit of success in doing it. Lynch stops, fires. Another falling grab. This time it's Mose Frazier. Well, that's frustrating. When you have a quarterback, you can't get to him because you don't know where he's going to launch from. Where's the launch point for Pax Paxton Lynch? And then he's throwing darts like this. <laughs> Left foot clearly inbounds, but a nice short roll, and he's got tremendous velocity on it. Shows some touch at times when he needs it. He is the complete package. This is the tenth play of the drive for Memphis to start the second half. Lynch sets up, goes deep, looking in zone. Cut. Touchdown, Mose Frazier. A 31-yard strike. This is just a short roll to the left and then a nine route. Going to give an inside move. I'm just going to get it. Nice job pulling up, finding the football, and Frazier able to come down with it inbounds. Some throw, though, by Paxton Lynch. Memphis came to win today. Celebrating by Moses Frazier. A second on Sportsman like to bring an ejection. Moses Frazier. His third touchdown catch of the season. Ten play, 82 yard drive. Four straight possessions from Memphis have ended in scores now. The lead is 31 to 14. Memphis has won 12 in a row. It's been over a calendar year since they lost their stiffest test of the season. No matter. It's all Tigers this afternoon at the Liberty Bowl. 31-14 Memphis in front of 13th ranked Ole Miss. Tigers undefeated. At 5-0, and they've won 12 in a row. Jalen Walton back to receive this kick. He stands outside the 10. Jake Elliott puts it in the air. Walton comes up to the 15. A great field position, maybe more. And he takes it nearly to the 35-yard line. <laughs> Kelly throws down the sideline. He's got oh, his man. That's Cody Core. And a first down for Memphis. What a, a throw for Ole Miss. There's a, a, a hole or weakness in the defense in cover two between the corner and the safety. And you've got to have enough arm strength to drive the ball in there on a rope. And Chad Kelly does exactly that to beat the coverage. Straight ahead, Jalen Walton. To the 35, gain of seven. The Brees has decided to come out attacking in this possession. Trying to get back in this football game. Walton has room. First down run, gain of eight. They have Ingram in the slot uncovered. A dangerous receiving tight end who has been relatively quiet. There he is at the top of the screen. He's been quiet most of the afternoon. Kelly looking that way. Instead he goes to the outside. Treadwell forces his way down the sideline. Dontrell Nelson couldn't get him down immediately, and it turns into a 17-yard game. Well, you have to get into his body. He's so strong and he's long. But he can kind of keep you away from him. You've got to get into his body, not allow that stiff arm to take you out of the tackle. But this is a nice drive for Ole Miss. Jordan Wilkins now tailback. To the end zone. Treadwell's got it. He's in. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Six-yard strike to Laquan Treadwell. This looks so easy. The entire drive decided to mix a little bit of Jalen Walton into that drive and some of the running game, and that opened up some things outside for Treadwell.
Ron Cooper trying to protect his wide receiver after Memphis grabbed Treadwell's leg late. Chad Kelly, second touchdown pass of the day. Found a rhythm for Chad Kelly in that drive. Five plays, 68 yard scoring drive. 104 off the clock. That's a first score for Ole Miss since there was 9.44 to go in the first quarter. It's a 10 point lead for Memphis. Memphis will take a knee. How do you respond? Quick hitter to the outside. Big stick by Trey Elson. Let's check in with Lauren. Well, before that Ole Miss scoring drive, the injured defender, C.J. Johnson, predicted that they were going to score, and he told the defense, we have to get a stop right here. Denzel Kimdichie saying anyone who's sitting needs to stand up right now and man up. And also, middle linebacker Christian Russell saying we have to play with more energy. He said, I don't care what this crowd's doing. We have to bring the energy. I, I got to tell you, if you don't have energy in this environment, <laughs> when the crowd is 35 40% Ole Miss, this is the kind of games you should be getting up for. Big hit there. Trying to go once again to the bubble screen of Phil Mayhew. He gets dropped for a loss of one. Yeah, and it's kind of the same situation with Ole Miss that they had last week. You're throwing all these bubble screens outside. Now it's time to, to do what Ole Miss did to start this game. And maybe fake a bubble screen, pump it, and allow, the, allow these receivers to turn up. Let Paxton Lynch set his feet, a reset after the pump fake, and then to launch one deep. Memphis has been magnificent on third downs today. This is a big one. On third and six, going deep. Over through Miller. Coverage by Tony Bridges. He misread it. He actually had cross. It was open with basically no one in front of him in the middle of the field. Like there, he just kind of made his mind up that he was going to Anthony Miller no matter what. Cross was actually the receiver that came open. Spencer Smith on to punt it away for Memphis. That's Collins Moore standing outside the five. Fair catch taken. Just outside the 15. This is Ingram to tie in. And he takes it right into the sticks. Brought down by Jannard Avery, gain of nine. An All-American, All-SEC player in 2014. It took a little while to get to call his number, but a talented weapon in this offense that you, you get so caught up in Treadwell and Attaboy Joe and Cody Core. And he is just as he can hurt you just as much as those the other three can. That was his third catch. Kelly is back to the outside. Nifty move. Laquan Treadwell. Still on his feet, and he turtles up to take it past the 40 yard line, a gain of 16. Defensively, I don't know, it may look, looks as though Memphis may be getting worn down a little bit. Poor tackling, bad angles, missed tackles. And they're allowing big chunk yards by this old Miss offense. This time, he's able to find Stringfellow. I think the difference here has been the tempo. Once he starts going fast, or they go fast, really take the thought out of it, or the thinking out of it for just about the entire offense, how they can execute. Just call a play, let's go run it, let's attack this defense, and the last two possessions, they've done it. Evan Ingram told us last week, he said, sometimes in the sideline, we get bogged down, we have to remind ourselves, go faster, go faster. Tempo's a goal. Now on a pump and go. He fits it in once again inside the 15. Just, just shy of the marker. Looks like the Markel Pack and Chad Kelly really sharing the ball here. He's moved it around. Core, Ingram, Zettergren, and of course Treadwell. All passes this drive and another first down. Ninth play of the drive. Kelly gathers, fires. That's Treadwell again. Dontrell Nelson on the coverage, gain of eight. Uh, executed so fast. Really, you don't allow for a substitution. Memphis trying to get a, a player in and out, but now you get things mixed up and confused. Kelly under center fires to Treadwell. 
slips before he can make a move. And that would bring up third down. Ole Miss has had its issues this season inside the 10 yard line. Failed to score against Florida. Failed to score on first and goal from the nine last week on their first possession against New Mexico State. Yeah, well played by Jackson Dillon. There to, to limit Treadwell to basically no game. Wilkins to tailback. How much cushion Treadwell's getting at the top. And you see it right there, just the cushion. And you're going to take a back pedal into the end zone. I mean, there's the first down marker. You got to get up on him and force a quick throw. Make him earn it. Don't just give him that 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 cushion. Kelly goes right, lobs it too much, trying to find Ingram. I think you kick it here if you're Hugh Freeze. To being down by 10, you're going to need a field goal anyway. So go ahead and kick it. They're looking at that look. It may have gotten clouded in there for Chad Kelly. He lost Ingram with a bunch of bodies, a bunch of old, old Miss defenders in front of him. 24 yard attempt from Memphis native Gary Wonderlick at a Memphis University school. And there's the field goal. Ole Miss able to add it 31 24. With all the momentum. Memphis coming out of halftime and had things going the way they wanted it. All of a sudden, you look up, a couple of defensive stops from Ole Miss. Now the, all the pressure is on Memphis and the offense. No return for Memphis. There's 16 seconds left in the quarter. You got to move the football here if you're Memphis. And Lynch completes it to Jalen Oglesby. And the other part, the other part for Memphis, we're going to get a quarter break in a second. You got to keep your defense off the field because yeah, no they doubt. look gassed. They look, they look tremendously gassed. And then offensively, you're, you're moving, you go backwards, you punt the football, and there's a lot of defense has been on the field a lot. So it comes down to this fourth quarter around the corner. We've got a touchdown game. This presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. And Memphis with a chance for a signature victory, not just for 2015, but in program history here. Can they hold on? And how much gas does their defense have left in the tank? It's a touchdown lead for the Tigers. Play action to the jet sweep. Long pass outside. Caught! It's Anthony Miller again! 20-yard game. What a nice throw. Far right hash. You're throwing basically a fade stop to the far sideline. I mean, he just lets this thing rip. Behind, back shoulder throw. Turns him nicely with the football. That's excellent work. Ninth catch of the day for Miller, 123 yards. Lynch pressured from the right side. A little stiff arm to create space. <laughs> He's able to make that a close play, running backwards off his back foot. Breland Speaks brought the coverage. Look at what's the strength. This is 6 7. Ending off a big defensive line and inside and Speaks. He's 3 13. And it's still able to get enough on that throw outside the tackle box to even, even make, to make it close. The receiver is actually in the air. Paxton Lynch took over as a redshirt freshman, took the job from an established starter. He caught a lot of heat in the decision making, caught a lot of heat here in the area. Now he shows option. Garcius. And then they made it through that year. They had a great year last year. He really turned it on late in the season. Then this spring, he gathered his teammates with all the accolades start flowing in. He said, guys, I'm not listening to any of that. Because those are the same people two and a half years ago that were hating on me and hating on all of us. It's all right here in this room. It's all right here with this team. They've won their last 12. Play action again. Lynch chased. Lobs, nobody there. Take and a bring up fourth and four. I'm sure he was indeed out of, outside the tackle box, but this will bring, bring Elliott in for a field goal attempt. And I mean, they, do. they bring Haynes right off the edge, comes free, and he's. Arguably their top uh, pass rusher leads the team in sacks. So here's Jake Elliott. Two game winners last year. One against Temple, then 
to force a second overtime in their bowl game win against BYU. This is from 37. He's used to making big kicks. He needs this one. No matter. <laughs> Could have been a 15 yard penalty, still would have been good. Jake Elliott extends the Memphis lead. 10 point advantage for the Tigers. Memphis has answered the hype today. 34 24, the lead. Tom Hart alongside Heisman Trophy winner Andre Ware. Now it's a chance for Ole Miss to answer with Chad Kelly, a quarterback. Yeah, well, it is. And I mean, the way you get him going, a couple of quick passes, get his foundation and, and really his rhythm established again. They've been able to do that in the last couple of drives, and well, they're going to certainly need it here. Jack Kelly, 30 of 40, 312 yards and a couple of touchdowns today. He's now set an Ole Miss single season record for 300 yard games in a season, breaking the record by Eli Manning and Bo Wallace. But, but this is the kind of game that can make a quarterback. They had one at Alabama. They didn't answer the bell against Florida. And for the rest of the season, going into the SEC gauntlet, these last 944, big difference for Ole Miss. Well, it really is. And I think he's taking care of the ball for the most part, which got him into trouble against Florida a couple of weeks ago. But, you know, forget the stats here. This game boils down to a couple of possessions. Can he put his team in a position to win? And we're going to see right here. They basically have to score here. He finds Quincy Adeboijo on the first play, and it goes for 26 yards. He's got the weapons to do it. He has found plenty of receivers thus far today. He has shared the ball well to eight different receivers. Lots on his plate in terms of reading coverage, knowing where and when to give the football. They turn to the ground game, and it looked like Jordan Wilkins slipped. Let's go down the field checking with Laura. Tom, Galen Hall's Memphis defense has come up with some big stops, but he still wants to see better communication. He said, guys, I don't care if they have the signal. We need to make sure that we get the signal so that we're on the same page. He wants them to be louder out there and communicate better. All right, Laura, thank you. Second and 11. Kelly goes deep down the sideline. Treadwell over through and I, I like the shot. I mean, at some point, you're going to have to hit a big one. You get your best receiver matched up one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. I like the thought by Chad Kelly. Third down, 11. After the big strike to Adeboijo, they need another big one. They are three for 11 on third downs. Will they bring pressure? The short comes, corner blitz. Man. Kelly pump and go. Lobs core. Gets taken out of bounds. Incomplete. Man, he, he was a little slow to get up, maybe discouraged because he didn't come down with a reception. But they bring the corner blitz off the edge. And the safety was able to get there in time, Regis Ball, and not core out of bounds. There's no doubt about that one. Nice play by the safety Regis Ball. That is a scary landing for Cody Core, the senior from Auburn, Alabama. They've already lost Kendichi to a concussion. Robert Kendichi. Roderick Proctor back to receive this punt. Proctor scrambles his way past the 20. 30 yard punt. Now becomes a time game for Memphis, leading by 10 with 8.52 to go. Lynch's numbers on third down are mind blowing. On play action, he lets it go. He finds his tight end. Daniel Montiel with his first catch of the day, and it's a 17 yard game. That's a play right out of Ole Miss's playbook. An option inside, it's not there. They cover it up. You can run as a quarterback. They cover that up. What's the third option? Let's flip it to the tight end, Allen Cross, and pick up the first down. Montiel is the 10th different receiver Paxton Lynch has hit today. I don't know if I've ever seen a quarterback that big, or as big as Lynch, and as mobile as he is. 
And now Jarvis Cooper. Well, he barely played his senior year of high school. He played in a couple of games and suffered an injury and then came back and played in one All-Star game. When Memphis recruited him, they recruited him without seeing him throw a pass live. He looked good on tape. He liked his athleticism. They offered him a scholarship without knowing if the guy could throw in person. They said the first workout he came in, <laughs> he was in indoor center, threw the first pass, and everybody just went, shoo. Oh, okay. yeah. He oh, yeah, throw. he can throw it. <laughs> no doubt about it. Blind faith, and that is paid off on second and eight. Cooper again. Mike Hilton with the stop. There's my point right there. Instead of trying to run outside and outflank this quick defense, go right downhill with Cooper. As well, they came back to the earlier down. They ran the, the sprint draw with him coming back across the quarterback's face. They were successful with that. The yards to gain in the running game is going to be right inside without Kondichi in the lineup. Well, the best in the country on third down conversions and now looking at a third and two. There's another first down. Pick up a five for Jarvis Cooper. Starting to bleed this clock away right around five minutes before they snap it again. Another first down and some momentum for this Memphis offense. Darrell Dickey, associate head coach and co-offensive coordinator, working with Brad Cornelson on the play calling today. That's and they've been I, magnificent. That's why. Excuse me, Tom, that, that field goal by Elliott was so important. You know, now you control the game. You got to drive going. You're going to force you freeze at some point to start burning timeouts. But then you still need you, you still need two scores just to tie the game. Here's Frazier. Taken down by CJ Hampton, the sophomore to take the first time out right now. Inside the 35 to the 32. Paxton Lynch and Memphis looking for their 13th consecutive win, leading Ole Miss by 10. Here it's the SEC against the American. Memphis trying to go to 6-0 on the year. Craft the man in motion. They give it back with a little counter look. And big room on the right side for Jarvis Cooper. Yeah, there's that cutback again that they talked about. We talked to Daryl Dickey. He said they're a natural cutback team. They get you smoke and mirrors. They get you thinking speed sweep with Kraft. They come back underneath with Jarvis Cooper. And the flow of the defense basically creates a hole for Cooper to run through. And another first down for Memphis. Tenth play of the drive. They're letting the clock roll. Now he won't snap it until it's well under 10 seconds. Ole Miss has two timeouts remaining. Cooper, the running back. Picked up 10 last time. Here he is between tackles again. Takes it inside the 20, gain of five. Second and five for Paxton Lynch. Cooper. Stood up after a gain of two. Timeout taken by Ole Miss. They'll have one remaining now. Clock stops 3.18 to go. Down two scores. Ole Miss has lost to an unranked non-conference opponent. Which is head scratching to me that Memphis is unranked. Not since South Carolina, while well, they're an independent 1976, knocked off 16th ranked Ole Miss 10 to 7. And given the way that this game unfolded, a touchdown strike on the second play of the game. Another touchdown in the second series. Ole Miss was up 14 to nothing, and they looked like they were just going to roll away with this one. Instead, Memphis stiffened up its defense. Both sides make, made mistakes. And the Tigers have gotten the big plays. Third and three now. This would be another big one. Got to salt this game away up two scores. Here's a jet sweep, Sam Kraft. And he takes it inside the 10. And a first down for Memphis. 
They faked it time and time again, and that time finally handed it off. And they gave it to a more powerful player in Kraft, rather than one of the receivers that are a little less in weight. This is a guy that could actually move some bodies if he got vertical, and he does there. Trying to engage him is Kendarius Webster, but he's got so much momentum, so much power headed north and south. Couldn't stop him from picking up the first down. Memphis looking for its first win against a ranked opponent. It's Peyton Manning, Tennessee, and that's after a win like this, and they continue to win where they would be ranked. And, and according to, and in accordance to other teams that are ranked, that I don't think have played as good a schedule as the Memphis Tigers to this point in the season. Along with Temple. Throw Temple in there as well. Well, they'll have Notre Dame on Halloween, and that'll be a big game for the Owls. This will be the 14th play of the drive. Tigers just salting this one away as we approach the two minute mark. Uh, you're taught when you're at this point in the game leading by 10. He was bleeded all the way down to about four seconds before you even think about snapping the ball. And then Temple. Yeah, I think we learned a lot about him today. We learned a lot, you and I, watching Paxton Lynch for the first time. And we learned that this defense is better than the numbers they've been allowing all season. Well, it's it's when you get the stops is that that are important. You're, you're going to face some high-powered offenses and some teams that can move the football, but can you step up and get the stops when necessary? They did that today. So far, so good. Amazing afternoon <laughs> for Paxton Lynch. 39 of 53 this afternoon for 384 yards. And impressive in doing so. Three touchdown passes, only one interception. The only interception that he's thrown all season long. Career highs in attempts and completions. That was today. a tip. That was a ping off a receiver. So as I mentioned, those don't really count. He completed nearly 74 percent of his passes against his SEC defense. Granted, an Ole Miss defense, which lost its best player on an offensive play early in the game. Free freezing and catch some flat for that. Using Robert Kandichi and his tailback on the third one. Yeah. I mean, you assume. You know, he's hoping right now that Kandichi's you know, going to be healthy enough to go next week against a powerful Texas AM team. Hoping to get some other guys back and healed up. And you know, they have just really, on, especially on defense, the injury bug has, has really hit them. Tell you what, it's a, a good day and age for, to be a Memphis Tiger football fan. 27 yard attempt for Jake Elliott. And Elliott able to add to the lead. Ask Justin Fuente, why'd you take this job? You were Garrett Patterson at TCU. You guys had a lot of things going. He said, I knew what was here, and I knew the people were going to support this program. I did my research. And I knew I could win here, and he has. And the downside to this Memphis program is Justin Fuente may not be around long because he's going to be one of the top names. A lot of Power Five no openings doubt. going forward. No doubt about it. I mean, there are a couple of jobs that are open already, or without head coaches. Steve Spurrier resigning earlier this week. South Carolina is a job that's open. USC, a job that that has an opening, and you know there will be more. Maryland, Maryland, Illinois, right now. As, as we draw closer to the end of the season and when, the no, and when the season ends. Yeah, we're not even in November. And those <laughs> yeah. are the jobs that are already yeah. available to a guy like Fuente. Plenty of others out there having great success. Four group of five teams undefeated. The three in the American we talked about. Toledo still undefeated. And now for Ole Miss. What do you do? How do you react? And most importantly, can you get healthy? Because Ole Miss is entering into the Lions' den in their SEC schedule after today. No return that time for the Rebels. I think we got sandbagged by Justin Fuente yesterday. This is the fifth time this season Memphis has come from behind to win a game. They did it against Kansas, Bowling Green, Cincinnati. And two weeks ago in their most recent game against South Florida. Now 13 consecutive wins for the Memphis Tigers. You know, you throw in the short yard, it stops. 
in here as well. The third and third and one that Kimdichie gets hurt on. Two fourth down stops for this defense of Memphis came up big. And as much as we praise the offense, I think equally as much the defense is deserving. Exclamation point for Memphis. And for the first time since 96, they'll knock off the ranked team. Arthur Millett with his second pick of the day for the Tigers defense. This is what it looks like for the Memphis coaches. Yep, handshakes all the way around. Justin Fuente with a signature win as a head coach. He's still coaching, telling Millette to get down. Don't fumble that thing away and give it back and give Ole Miss a chance to, to get the ball back. Get down, let's go kneel down and get out of here. Our final score, Memphis 37, Ole Miss 24. The Memphis defense holds Ole Miss to 10 points over the final 54 minutes and 44 seconds. And they found they find their 13th consecutive victory. They do it in grand fashion. It's a quiet storming of the field. Man, the party will rage in Memphis tonight. Let's go down to the mayhem. Laura Rutledge is standing by with Justin Fuente. Thanks, Tom. Coach, fans storming the field, and you just beat the number 13 ranked team in the country. I know it might take a while for it to sink in, but what's going through your mind? Well, I'm just awfully proud of our kids. You know, they've been through so much. Just building this program, and getting to this point, getting to play a game like this, and then to come through and find a way to win it. I'm awfully proud of them. And we've got a tremendous challenge in six days, and people make fun of me for saying it, but we do. We've got to go on the road to go play Tulsa Friday night, but this certainly feels good. Paxton Lynch with his fifth straight 300-yard game. What did he show the country today? Well, when you think about how he played a year ago against a very good defense in Ole Miss and how he's worked and continued to progress and hasn't gotten sidetracked by some of the recognition. You're just proud of the kid. He's got great character, great work ethic, and obviously he's becoming a pretty good player too. You're undefeated still, and you have a 13-game win streak going. What does this win mean for your program as a whole? Well, we're bowl eligible, and uh, we're going to go hit... Uh, our conference and and try and work our way through that. We've got a really good league this year. I think on a national stage it's starting to get some recognition deservedly so um, but it's one victory and it's one I'm proud of but um, in the big context I'm not sure I, I understand it yet. <laughs> All right. Thanks coach. You bet. Thank you. It's the undersell of the year. Memphis knocks off ranked Ole Miss. The final score, 37-24. The Tigers have won 13 in a row. For Andre Ware, Laura Rutledge, our entire crew, I'm Tom Hart. So long from the Liberty Bowl, where Memphis goes to 6-0.